came here with uh, Dave Winder, Winder Boat of course. Dave, unusual, uh, quite unusual rare appearance for you in the solos these rare days. Appearance. Well, it's rare appearance for everybody actually, yes, to be honest yeah, with you, this yeah, year, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so you've got your boat here. Um, is this uh, Denison's boat then, is it? Or is it officially your boat? Well, I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steve couldn't sail this weekend, so I jumped and took the opportunity. All right, okay, well, so from the horse's mouth, Mark, uh, Winder Mark 1A, so it's uh, the Winder, Winder Mark 1 yeah. uh, hull, uh, you know, that's uh, what aimed at more the lightweight sailor. Yeah. Bit more, ro bit less rocker. A bit less rocker. And so it's, uh, it's a 1A, so it's got a different deck mould, is that correct? Yeah. Alright, well, you talk about it. Tell me about your different moulds and your different shapes, and uh, so, just in a nutshell. So, the, uh, so this boat is basically optimised. It's, 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 it's flat a rocker as you can get on the solo. It's as narrow on the waterline as you can get. It's obviously as long the waterline length as you can get. The drawback of that is it becomes quite it's more sensitive to weight and and where you position yourself in the boat is more critical. Uh, so it's less forgiving probably than the Mark II. I think people find the Mark II an easier boat to sail. And it obviously carries weight a bit easier. Uh, I think if you're sailing on open water and with lots of long legs, the Mark 1's probably a quicker bet if you're good enough to sail it. Uh, people like Tom Gillard prefer the Mark 1. Uh, and there's some people at Salcombe still buy Mark 1's because, because of its downwind performance on the long legs you get there. Uh, so, how about roll tacking? Obviously, you've got a bit less, a uh, little bit less rocker. Does that, that make it a little bit more it, difficult? It, it doesn't spin quite as easily, but not dramatic, really. And so, you've got the 1A, so this is the up. So, so, the difference between this and the original deck is we changed the deck shape so to reduce the amount of, of water it scoops in when you, when you roll tack. So, there's a lot more twist in the deck on the, mark, on the original deck, and particularly at the back here. The, the water rolled in over the back quarter to so reduce that, change the gun shape, improve where the controls were done. But it was just, the main reason for making a new deck was to change because so that we could resin infuse it basically. Right. In line with the way the Mark II was done. And the way all our mouldings process have gone across the resin infusion because it's a cleaner, better process for the staff. And just a little, a little bit of a brief history then of, of when you got into solos, building solos. I mean, have you ever built a wooden solo? Uh, no. No? No. I mean, I sailed a solo in the early, probably late 80s, early, early 90s, and, and did contemplate building solos then. But we were so busy building fireballs that we just didn't have the time, really. Yeah. Um, it wasn't until we started moulding boats that it gives you the ability to produce more boats, different classes, easier and quicker. So uh, we started building solos in 2000, and, along and with purple, uh, Jim Hunt and Purple really. And where did you get that? Where did you get that initial Mark One shape from? Then did so you did you take so it off? We measured, we measured various boats that Jim told us to, or, or I think he actually brought the boats to us actually. And, and then we we made a plug from what we decided we'd learnt from measuring these boats, the way they were pushing the tolerances. And I suspect we actually pushed the tolerances even more in places. Uh, yeah, we still got the plug. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's still using the same hull mould that we made in 2000. And how about uh, developments for going forward for the future? Have you got any, any, any plans, anything in your head that you think, you know, you know what, why don't we try this? I mean, we're always, uh, we're always tweaking things. Uh, I think last year was probably the only year we didn't, apart from we made a new case top mold for Mark II, which was as much to replace a, a damaged mold more than anything. Yeah. But uh, you always tweak it a bit when you do that. But the previous year, we we altered the gunnel shape on the Mark II. We made new foil. We made a new centerboard mould, which is a different shape, 
and then we and the previous year we made a new rudder and rudder stop mould. You know, you're just always just trying to and you're looking for new materials and new ways of moulding them as well if possible if somebody would use out there that are resins. Yeah. And uh, how about the, the quick go, quick, big, quick, um, you know, give us a down low on your on your fittings and you set up your, your I see what, you know, what's, what's your cleats as standard? Is it a choice of the, the buyer still or is it? Yeah, I mean, the, the, they're pretty much all standard how I can fit out. I mean, this boat's got an extreme angle fairly just on the kicker. Um, this has got the in hole and the centre ball control, which are the only real big things that people add to the boat really. It's a pretty standard thing. I, mean, <coughs> I just fitted a boat out for, for uh, John Wag and he he's he's CNC machined some nice bits for the controls to lead through, which maybe that's something that we can if he's interested in making a, a decent quantity, it might yeah. be worth doing something like that because it looks really tidy. I mean, Harkin have done a, a 3D printed plate that goes on here to feed the control through, which works quite well. But I think he wears. I know Chris Brown's had trouble with his wearing. Whereas this this thing that he's had machined out of aluminium and then got it anodised, it looks really smart. So yeah. How about your uh, your floor grip you got on there? Yeah, I mean, this is the sea deck matting, which is the kind of expensive Rolls Royce stuff that you can get. But very few people are going for that now. Most people just have the standard uh, rubber matting that we normally fit, which is actually, in some respects, better because it's heavy, so you're putting a lot of weight on the floor. Uh, but there are new materials. Harkin have brought a new uh, floor grip out, which seems really good. We fitted that to uh, Ollie Wells had that on his boat, so that's a, that's a potential new product that some people can use. And uh, <laughs> how about how about uh, uh, hull colours? I, I'm only mentioning that because we've got obviously Andy behind yeah, us. No, was was that his choice or was that yeah, yours? His choice. I think it's the same colour as his. Uh, his bathroom. Okay. <laughs> oh, he's okay. <laughs> that, was, that was the idea. Yeah. <laughs> But we we just done one a, 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 ran, a fairly radical colour choice at the moment, which is quite a dark grey deck with a pale pastel blue hull and blue case top and blue non-slip, which looks quite different. Yeah, we do we do occasionally do coloured boats. Main norm a common choice is a different colour case capping, yep. which which. It's kind of low key, isn't it? Oh, that's brilliant, Dave. Anyway, uh, thank you for that. Uh, uh, continued success for the class, and you're doing a great job for us. Thanks very much. Cheers. <laughs>